Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my September 2022 reading wrap-up. This year has just flown by. Dane reads. I have one book to talk to you about today. That is Dreamer of June, the biography of Frank Herbert by Brian Herbert. Uh, beautifully written book. I gave this a solid 4 out of 5, maybe even a 4.5. It's a very comprehensive uh, biography of Frank Herbert, the creator of June, by his son Brian, who uh, obviously knew him very well, but is also a very accomplished writer in his own right. And um, yeah, it was just very moving. There were some awesome photos inside it somewhere, if I can find them. Lots of like old family photos and stuff. Lots of detail that you would only get from being a member of the family, and I did very much enjoy. It was the perfect end for me because this now marks the point in which I've read all of the June books, including the extended series. I've also read Road to June and Dreamer of June. So yes, would recommend if you're a Frank Herbert fan or if you just like a decent biography, you know. All right, then I read La Reine de Lectrice par Alan Bennett. So this is um, the Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett, but in French. Basically, the Queen gets into reading um, and it follows what happens after that. Now, it was very odd because about two days after I finished reading this, the Queen died. So I'm kind of glad I read it before then, otherwise it might have kind of hampered my enjoyment a little bit. But overall, I gave it a 4 out of 5. It's very good in French and in English. I did enjoy it more in English because I got more of the nuances, but I still enjoyed it a lot in French. Then I read Left You Dead by Peter James. So um, this is one of his Roy Grace crime novels. Um, not one of his best, to be honest. The thing with this one is it focuses a lot more on the backstory than it usually does. Um, so the actual main crime and mystery in it almost takes like a back seat and in fact not that much really happens in it there's a gone girl style twist in it um which i saw coming a mile off even though i normally don't even try and predict but i just thought it was quite obvious what was going on and i was just it, it was hard to suspend my disbelief that the cops didn't see it i guess um but overall it was still very well written and i did enjoy the backstory side of things i gave it a 3.5 out of 5. normally with this series i say you can dip in and read it in pretty much whatever order you want to but by this point we're on about number 18. so the backstory's developed so much that you probably do want to read it at least roughly in order you know but yes then I read a mystery book, which I'm not going to tell you about um, because it's a non-fiction thing to do with a health condition that one of my loved ones has, um, but it was interesting, 3.5 out of 5. We'll move on from that. I just wanted to include it for the sake of completeness and for my stats and all that stuff. And then I read Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. So this is one where I'd heard a lot about it, so I picked it up when I saw it going in a charity shop. Um, I thought it was okay. It's sort of historical fiction, I guess, set in America, in rural America, so it was kind of hard for me to relate to in a lot of ways. Um, it has a sort of classic timeless feel to it, but I don't know if it necessarily delivered on its promise. I thought it was okay. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5, but I certainly think it's been overhyped. Um, and I think it set itself a standard that it didn't live up to. It was trying to be more than it actually was able to be, if that makes sense. But it was still an okay read. Alrighty, guys, just got a couple of books to wrap up for you. One of them's actually up here. Um, so I finished listening to my audiobook of Unfinished Tales. By David Mitchell. So I had mixed feelings about this one because while it was pretty good, there were elements to it that I didn't... So I finished reading my audiobook of Unfinished Tales by... <laughs> So I finished reading my audiobook of Unfinished Tales by J.R.R. Tolkien. I gave it like a middle of the road 3.5 out of 5. It was just okay. Um, but yeah, it was good to kind of get some more backstory and things like that. It did feel very unfinished. It was also interesting to uh, listen to it because they had one narrator for the story and then one narrator who covered all of the um, notes and things like that. It was definitely more palatable as an audiobook, I think. So uh, yeah, Unfinished Tales. And then I read Black Swan Green by David Mitchell. So this is kind of like a coming of age book, I guess. Um, it's basically it's set during 19, the 1980s during the Falklands War and follows this like young lad in a, an English village. And it just follows that really. Now it is kind of told from his point of view and he was quite annoying. I find young characters annoying in general. Don't I, Biggie? Um, but yeah, I mean, it was worth reading and it's very well written because it's David Mitchell and he is a pretty decent author. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was just okay. Full review coming soon. I have some books to wrap up for you. Let me just make a note that I've just done some filming as well. Okay. Okie dokie. Good. Lovely. That's what we like to see. Okay, it's wrap up time. So let's just fucking go for it shall we so i read prick up your ears the screenplay by alan bennett adapted from john lair's biography and this is a biography of uh joe orton um who was a playwright and his murder by his lover kenneth hallowell um really beautifully written i'd love to go and see it especially because it's based on a true story you know fascinating stuff really i gave it like a strong 3.5 out of 5 again with it just being a screenplay it's not particularly long um, and I haven't seen the movie and I have no plan to, to be honest. Um, but I did enjoy reading this and it's part of my ongoing attempt to read everything that Alan Bennett ever did. 
Okay, then I read Dead Letter Drop by Peter James. So this is like an espionage thriller. It was originally published in 1981 and was Peter James's first ever novel. I'm now a pretty big Peter James fan. Um, he writes crime fiction and he's pretty good at that. This not so much. Um, I mean, it's interesting because he wrote this kind of to capitalise on the fact that Ian Fleming was dead and so there weren't any decent um, espionage spy thrillers coming out because obviously all the James Bond books had finished. Um, Unfortunately, the James Bond books are way better. It does definitely read like a first novel. It's also written in first person, which I don't particularly like. And the character wasn't very likeable. I gave it a three out of five, but uh, as you can tell with any of these, if tabs are sticking out of them, our review is coming. Then I read God Is Not Great by Christopher Hitchens. Uh, I actually read this via audiobook and it was a really enjoyable experience. It was actually read by the author as well, which is kind of weird because he's dead now as well. So it's like, you know, listening to the words of a dead man. Although I suppose it's the same whenever you listen to like, a John Lennon song or something like that, or any Elvis or whatever, Johnny Cash. Um, but yeah, this is non-fiction about why God is not great. Um, I'm an atheist, so going into this, I was kind of preconditioned to like it, really. I pretty much agreed with everything Christopher Hitchens says in this. Um, I can't say he particularly changed my mind about things. He solidified my belief in a few things. Um, but the thing is, so this always is going to get compared to The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. And I think The God Delusion is the superior book. Mainly because in The God Delusion, Dawkins kind of takes argument by argument and just knocks them all down like temp in bowling or something. Whereas in this, Hitchens just, this is more of like a memoir rather than a non-fiction book. So Hitchens talks about his own experiences with, with religion, which is all well and good. Um, but they're isolated experiences rather than Dawkins writing about religion as a whole and these are the arguments that have been espoused for why God exists and all that stuff. But I did still enjoy God is Not Great. Probably a strong 3.5 out of 5. Then I read Voridin's Lair by J.V. Hilliard. I say I read this. I mean, I just ticked it off. Uh, I edited this book. Um, the same actually with uh, Royally Doris by our very own Charles Heathcote here on Booktube. Basically, I marked them both as read on Goodreads because I had um, received my copies of them. As I say, I edited them both. I didn't review Charlie's. I did review this one because Hilliard asked me to. Charlie, if you want me to, I will review your books. I just feel a little bit dishonest and obviously after the beginning put a big disclaimer saying I edited this book just so you know um, but yeah this is book two in the Warminster series which is like an epic fantasy series Hilliard kind of created this after um, being a dungeon master for a long time and um, he just did a really good job with this and um, this can kind of continues the series I can't say too much about the plot without spoiling the earlier books you know the same with Royally Doris uh, really um, all I can say is that it's a sort of a beautiful very moving end really to the Doris series and I'm now very much looking forward to what Charlie writes next. I gave both of those a 4 out of 5. What else have we got over here? Unfinished Tales by J.R.R. Tolkien. I'm pretty sure I already told you I finished reading that. That was like a 3 out of 5. It was alright. Uh, Where the Crawdads Sing and uh, Black Swan Green by David Mitchell. I'm pretty sure I already told you about those. And Left You Dead. I'm pretty sure I told you about that. Um, pretty sure. This is just my pile of shit to review. Um, so then we have Closed Casket by Sophie Hanna. So this is one of the new Hercule Poirot mysteries. Um, I say new, it's actually the second one that she'd done. I think she'd done four by this point. I've been reading a lot of Sophie Hanna recently and um, I am quite enjoying her stuff. I know not everyone enjoys it. Charlie notably does not. Um, but for me, having read everything that Christie ever wrote, this is the closest I get to getting more Christie. And it does feel, it feels like a tribute to her, you know. It, um, it doesn't feel like original or new or anything like that. It just feels like exactly what the kind of thing you would write if you were asked to write something that just did all of the Christ like ticked all of the Christie boxes. I gave it like 3.5 out of 5. There was a big twist at the end of the second act, which you can see coming a mile away, which kind of annoyed me that everyone acted as though it was like this mind-blowing thing. It's like, no, you can see that coming from miles off, mate. Um, but other than that, it was pretty good. Then I read The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. So um, this one's really interesting because I read this at the same time as I was listening to the audiobook of God Is Not Great. And um, this kind of taps into some similar themes. So it's about religion and the evils it can do in society. And this basically, you can see here, there's a hand with uh, five fingers and a thumb. Basically, over half of new babies and new plants and new animals are being born with like genetic mutations. And people are God mad. So they're like, no, it's a travesty. So they're killing things that are 
that, are, that have got these mutations and it kind of investigates what it's like to be in that society um, and we follow some characters who have like telepathic ability very interesting stuff I really enjoy John Wyndham's writing style and I've liked everything I've read from him, from him so far I'd give this probably a week four out of five and I'm looking forward to reading some more. Oh, okay, I have just a few books now to wrap up for you guys. Uh, so we have Ozma and the Wayward Wand by Polly Berens. Uh, this was sent to me by Charlie, Charles Heathcote on uh, Booktube. This is just another book set in the Oz universe. It's a young puffin book, a story book for those who have developed reading stamina, which does sound like me. Uh, it was a three out of five, it was just okay. There's not too much to it, to be honest. Um, so, there's not really much to say, it was just alright, you know? Okay, then I read The Call of the Weird by Louis Theroux. So this is uh, kind of like a follow-up to his, um, oh, what was it called? Uh, Weird Weekend series. Was it Weird Weekends? Basically, he goes back around America meeting up with a bunch of people that he met for his TV show. So we have, like, UFO believers. He meets up with Ike Turner, Tina Turner's ex-husband. Uh, like rappers, all kinds of people, white supremacists. It's just a really interesting little read. It's his first book, but um, it's very well written. You can tell the guy's a journalist. I gave it a strong four out of five. Then I read Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews, Virginia Andrews. And this is a book that's been recommended to me by a lot of people. Unfortunately, I didn't particularly like it. It was okay. I, I really liked the concept to it, just maybe not the uh, execution. So I won't be continuing with the series. I gave it a three out of five. Um, part of my issue with this, so I listened to this via an audiobook and the narrator was very annoying. So I kind of was happy when bad things happened to the characters. Um, but also it was just a very slow burn, probably too much of a slow burn for me. And you could kind of tell where it was going. It just took a long way to get there. So I said it was like walking along a straight road with nothing to look at. And by the time you get to where you're going, you forgot why you were going there in the first place. So I gave it a 3 out of 5. And I'm going to be chucking this copy away because, you know... Can't really, you know. Okay, and then I read The Monogram Murders by Sophie Hanna. So this is the first of her new um, Hercule Poirot mysteries that she wrote with the permission from the Agatha Christie estate. Um, Charlie, funnily enough, commented on my review of this and said his problem and his mum's problem with it was that it was so obvious who did it. Now, for me with uh, murder mysteries, crime, cozy mystery, all that kind of stuff, I don't tend to think in that way. Like, I just let the story wash over me. I'm not too preoccupied with who did it and why. So because of that, it worked a little bit better for me, but it was definitely the weakest of the Sophie Hannah Hercule Poirot books. I gave it a weak 3.5 out of 5. Um, really, it's more that she was finding her feet with this one, and then I think her later ones have done a much better job of things. And that is it. Those are all the books that I read in the month of September. It's now October the 5th, so I should probably finish my wrap-up. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.